Connie Louise Falconeri. You lived in that greenhouse in the corner of Mystic and Rockingham in Bensonhurst. Je vous demande pardon. Pour le... She'll call you back. If you didn't want me to use the phone, a simple I changed my mind would have sufficed. Sufficed. You were always trying to use those big words when you were younger, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. Sure you do. Connie. Mistaken me for something I knew else. something familiar. I don't, the way you said on, on the desk, the way you, you the shape of your mouth, but it was it was the sugar that nailed it. The way you tapped it, you know what your fingers? I used to tease you about that. Remember? No, I can't remember what I've never experienced. But my time is money, so I'll leave you to your delusion. Swear on the Virgin Mary that you weren't born Connie Falconeri. I don't swear. The accent's great. It doesn't surprise me because you work really hard at trying to speak like someone who had class. You seem really obsessed with this Connie Falconer. It's, it's very good. Yeah. Very good, yeah. Well, I'm sure that the real Connie is so much better. So why don't you call Benson Hurt's information and find her? Okay, you know what? I, I don't want to make trouble for you, but I will if you don't explain. It's your choice. Connie Falconeri since I changed it when I was 18. You studied French in, in high school. You were on the honor roll. I cared about my grades. You even studied during lunch because when I stopped by a couple of times at Sacred Heart, you, you, you didn't want anything to do with me. It was a long time ago. A different life, different name. Why'd you change your name? Is that in trouble with law? No, that was your specialty. I've never had so much as a parking ticket. Oh, you weren't always so perfect. There were a couple of nights there that we could have You seem to you. remember a lot about Bensonhurst. Yeah, well, so do you. Oh, well, you know, some of it's coming back. I do remember you were always as cocky. Yeah, some things never change. And others change completely. I am one of them. Couture magazine. My lawyer says it's a big deal. Is that a big deal? Couture is a leading fashion magazine in the I'm country. I'm sure you had a lot to do well, with that. Well, yes. It had everything to do with me. Doesn't surprise me because remember we used to take the subway into Manhattan and we used to walk, you know, watch everybody walk by and used to memorize what the ladies were wearing. And then you started going to thrift shops buying rip-off designer clothes. Remember that one guy who said... Christian you... Dior. <laughs> Your memory is becoming a bit unnerving. Well, then why don't you do a good time? Why are you so ashamed to use your own name? People change their name for a lot of reasons. My father changed his name to get over a gambling debt. My wife, my ex-wife, used to be called Caroline. Now she's Carly. Hmm. Changing an elegant name like Caroline for Carly speaks volumes. Let me guess, lots of spandex and animal prints? She's hot. She dresses that way. <laughs> That's a good way of dodging. So, why did you leave Connie Falconer behind? I wanted to move on. So, the summer before I started at Princeton, I went down to the Hall of Records, and I legally changed my name. Your parents didn't have a problem with that? They were hurt, but I explained to them how it would help me fit in, and they eventually supported me. I started at Princeton as Kate Howard. What'd you come up with that name? It's... Catherine Howard was the fifth wife of Henry VIII. He beheaded her. Oh, and that seemed like a good omen to you? Catherine Howard sounds vaguely familiar to people. Uh -huh. They've heard it, they're not quite sure where, and it projected the image I wanted to, someone with background and social standing. There's one problem, Connie. It's a, it's a lie. The fashion industry is full of smoke and mirrors. We create fashion. Why shouldn't I create myself? Because it's not who you are. No, it's exactly who I am. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Connie Falconeri no longer exists. Connie Falconeri was supposed to run away with me. She never showed up. Why? I waited all night until, what, it was 11.30, we were supposed to meet. I 
until the morning. I even went down your route to your house three times to make sure that you weren't jumped or something. And when I finally realized you weren't, you weren't coming, you know what I did? I stood in that alley across your house and I watched you leave in the morning. And to, it, it was like, for you, it was like a, just like nothing. Like an ordinary day. Toothpaste and ice. What does that mean? It's the surefire remedy for puffy eyes. The kind you get when you've been crying all night. Did your parents catch you? I caught myself. About to climb out my window and run away from the future I wanted. I thought that was what you wanted. No, you were all I could think about. Oh. You know, your dimpled grin and the way you looked at me like you could see right into my heart. Oh yeah, you were dangerous and edgy and I wanted to be the one to save you. I had my bags packed, I had my savings account cleared out, I made it to my bedroom window and then I looked out and I... I saw my poster of Manhattan where I had promised myself that one day I was going to live and work and I was going to fit in glamorous and sophisticated and so far away from Bensonhurst. And I, I realized if I climbed out that window, I would be running away from my dreams. And I wasn't going to do that, not even for you. Why didn't you tell me that? Because I was afraid you'd talk me out of it. So what'd you do the day after you didn't run away with me? I entered an essay contest. I won it a month later. Which you would have known had you stopped by to see me. Well, you you know, you were in high school. I was working. You lived a few blocks away. Well, you, I was waiting for you to come by the house and tell me why you didn't show up that night. When you didn't, then I figured you wanted to be alone. Well, that's uh -huh. what my head wanted, not my heart, but my head won the battle. Story of my life. So what did you do the next day? I got a job for Joe Scully. It proved that, you know, it, he could trust me and help me advance in the business. Hmm. So, what is your business, or don't I want to know? Well, I had ambitions, you know, I wanted money and, and, and power, and since you never showed up, I had nothing to lose. And that could be good, you know, in my line of work. Well, the same could be said about publishing. You have to commit completely, live it, breathe it, be willing to do whatever it takes. Well, it looks like you've, uh, you've done that. You've made it big, Connie. Congratulations. You don't appear to have done too badly yourself. See, there you go with that. It, like you grew up on the Upper East Side, appeared to it have It comes done. naturally to me now. There's no trace left of who I was. And your smile, little smile there, it's always... It looks the same. You know? Maybe that's why I smile so rarely. The car is waiting. I trust this one will function. The, the car service apologizes for the problem. You just call the office and make sure that the photos from the shoot have uploaded. Thank you. Leaving so soon? I have work to do, and there's really nothing left to say. Yeah, there is. Um, I had something I didn't give a chance to say. Goodbye, Connie. It's been a slice of heaven. Excuse you. You must be Carly. 